name is Wendy Potomsky and I'm the managing partner and owner of Retake Furniture Rentals. Retake is once again a proud supporter of the Canadian Film Festival and is working to contribute to the Canadian film and TV industry by making it an easy and sustainable place to do business. Retake provides sustainable short and long-term furniture rental options to meet production schedules and product needs. Retake also understands the importance of set design and the dynamic nature of the film and TV industry, which is why we created a company to specifically support Canadian filmmakers. Retake can assist you in setting up your production office with sustainable alternatives to keep your team working safely as we all head back to work. We use sustainable approaches to minimize product going to landfill, which means any product supplied by Retake is helping to support the circular economy. Our in-house upholstery services can tailor our product to meet your set design requirements and match your color schemes. Contact us to discuss your office furniture needs. Our goal is to help you get back to work as safely and efficiently as possible. Stay safe everyone and enjoy the films and shorts at this year's Canadian Film Festival. Celebrate Canadian filmmakers on Super Channel Fuse with an exclusive homegrown event. I'm ready. Go. The Canadian Film Fest presented by Super Channel brings this year's festival into your home for a second year as a virtual experience. Goodbye. Okay, Every Thursday, Friday and Saturday night until April 18th, enjoy the premieres of indie films and shorts from critically acclaimed and up-and-coming Canadian producers and directors. And this is where the donkey starts talking. Cut. Immerse yourself in this inspiring and spirited event, both on air and online, with live Facebook Q&A sessions that follow the films. Makes sense. Start it. Experience the Canadian Film Fest, proudly presented by Super Channel. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our last Q&A of the CFF 2021. I'm Bernie Euler. I'm the Executive Director of the Canadian Film Fest. Ashley, where are you? Are you there? there? I'm right here. Hey, hi. I'm Ashley Rains. I'm Festival Director and Head Programmer of the 2021 Canadian Film Fest. And we are so honoured and I'm happy to have the Range Roads team here with us this evening. So I'm going to throw it to Kyle. Kyle, please introduce yourself and your amazing team joining you this evening. Absolutely. I'm Kyle Thomas, a writer, director, producer of Range Roads. Um, we also have with us Joe Perry, um, who uh, played Grayson. We have Alana Holly Purvis, who played uh, Frankie. And we have Chad Brownlee here with us as well, who played Bruce. Glad to have you guys aboard. And uh, thank you so much for being part of the CFF this year. It's a great movie to end the festival off on. It's, um, it, it really hit me because, and this is what I love about a good story, is no matter where it's set, no matter who the people are, when a story's done right, you can, you can connect with the characters. You can say, yep, I've been there. I was Alana talking to my brother who I love, but sometimes it's difficult. <laughs> and he'll say the same thing right back at me uh, about me, but uh, at the end of the day, we're family. And, you know, that's, that's what we hold on to. So Kyle, was that, was that one of the major, one of the major things you wanted to look at right at the beginning when you're even just writing the script? Is that the main focus of what you wanted to delve into? Yeah, I think the point of entry really was uh, when it came to developing the characters with Alana and Joe was that, you know, we wanted to explore the sibling relationship. And this is definitely something that I hadn't seen a lot of in cinema at all there. You know, we, I, I did a lot of research and, and, and there, there weren't a lot of films that uh, explored this relationship and the sibling relationship. Like there's no archetype for it in that sense you know what i mean it's a it's a very it's very complex and um and so we i, I feel like we just scratched the surface of, of of what could be done in terms of of uh, exploring that topic but that's definitely the point of entry for us so when you say you're developing the the characters with them are they part of the writing process or is it that's after the script's done and then you're asking them so, how do you go about that yeah, well, on this project, we started collaborating, um, Joe, Alana, and I, about, like, five, six years ago. So we started with, like, yeah, with, like, Google Docs and coffee meetings and all that kind of stuff, just, like, talking about 
w- how we wanted to develop these characters, what their relationship was like. And like Joe and Alana talked separately from me and I talked with Alana and then I talked to Joe, we'd all talk together. Like it was a, um, you, you know, we spent all that time developing this so that they could really resonate, right? So that they were, we wanted them to be real. We wanted people to be able to, um, for the audience to be able to, to connect with them and for them to be full, you know, uh, like three dimensional uh, humans on screen. And so that development process, we were very lucky that we all wanted to do that and had the time and were able to do it because that doesn't often happen in film. Right. And so, yeah, that was uh, that it took a while, but we got there. And that's such a successful part of this film is the the brother-sister relationship. And it's so nuanced because you have these scenes where they are, you know, at polar opposites. And then you have these really like complicated scenes where, for example, when they're reviewing the will and, you know, um, the brother's like, okay, and what about my sister? And she's clearly left out of the will. And you have these moments where that resonates with them as individuals but then also as you know their familiar relationship so joe and alana aside from kyle what work did you guys do to really like dig into that relationship and build those nuances that were just brilliant on screen go for it joe um well working with alana it's it's honestly it's easy like we we had we had that time, um, that collaborative time beforehand where we were able to, uh, for lack of a better term, like throw the spaghetti at the wall, see what's stuck. <laughs> and uh, and we, we even had that uh, a proof of concept film that we got to shoot where we actually got to explore these uh, parts of these characters and these relationships between the two of them that, that never made it to this film, but, but built this bedrock of, uh, of trust and of love that um, kind of, kind of what you were saying, where you can, you can have those clashes, you can have those disagreements, but that, that root and that bedrock of, of sibling familial love was there. And I, I feel working with Alana, like I said, we, we, we've worked together before and, and, and she's just such a, a giving, honest, uh, performer that it's it's just simple when 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 we started talking and and we'd have times like uh um before the scenes a day before the scenes we'd be hanging out and, and going through the scenes and and just just honestly going back and forth and and uh seeing how that went and uh it just came super naturally oh very cool Alana, do you have nice things to say about Joe as well, or is it going to go the other way? <laughs> I'm okay with either. I do, and I'm sorry. Something froze on my end there with the internet. No, it's it's so amazing, and I second everything that Joe said, but what was so cool and what I loved about this film is Kyle gave us the huge gift of letting us film the scene in as much of the chronological order as possible, which is also a huge rarity in film. And I know that was a big goal of Kyle's. Um, and so it was so cool as I remember, Joe, when we were doing the funeral home scene and the bodies were being cremated, to me, that's like where it locked in the whole time because we got to do it in order. It, it was such a gift um, where you get to kind of feel out what that relationship is almost from the beginning of the film, even though we had written it when Joe and I were playing it scene to scene, I felt like we were learning what that was as Frankie and Grayson revisited what the relationship was. Um, but yeah, it was that moment for me when we were watching that cremation where I just literally felt, I think I almost, I don't think I did, but I had this huge impulse to grab Joe's hand, like grab Grayson's hand. And I just felt like the second, you know, Kyle said cut, I was like, oh, that's it. That's who, that's who this, these two are. And yeah, so the growth and the discovery of it for me was what was so cool. I've, I've never seen somebody so happy about a cremation. Oh, yeah. Cool. Honestly, cool. honestly, burn it was so even Kyle was like, this is a good shot. So yeah, <laughs> it was, it was one of my favorites. And that was a shot of opportunity too. Yeah. yeah. Really? What do you, that what do you shot, mean? like the subtext, everything that exists in that one frame, yeah. that whole sequence, it's like, we were pretty excited at, like that was the last thing we shot that day and when we went back and dumped the footage and watched it and it was just like oh this is a this is this is good <laughs> we were very happy yeah 
that Mm -hmm. definitely was one of my favorites but you guys said you've been working on sorry five or six years yeah off and on I mean not 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 dedicated 100 percent, but yeah from from the point that it was we decided hey you know I want to make a movie and I know uh, Joe and Alan, I want to be involved. And, and that was right after my first feature Valley below. So we, we, we knew right away that we wanted to work together and yeah, it was a, it was, that was a while ago. So it <laughs> took that long. And, and then, then so, so Chad, so you, this is, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is your first yep. acting role. Really? Um, I was, uh, I was an extra in the tooth fairy with the rock. <laughs> The Rock. Yeah, so I had no speaking lines, but I was I was his teammate. I was a hockey player. I was fresh out of hockey. This would have been 2008, 2009. So that was my first experience on like a full movie set. But this this to actually, you know, having to embody a character um, with speaking lines and you're you're, you know, entrenched in the narrative of the story. That was a, that's a whole new experience for me that I absolutely loved. Wow. I never would have thought, man, that was that was amazing. For, for not even just for a first time. That's just, and it, that was just amazing. Wow, that's cool. Well, I had uh, good direction from Kyle. So that helped and, uh, and good actors around me as well to, to learn from. So it's when I'm, you know, doing a festival, a music festival, I'm always standing side stage learning from those that come after me. And there's always something you can learn from anybody, whether they're more experienced than you or less experienced than you. But being on set with everybody, I just took it all in and, and seeing how involved, you know, Alana and Joe were in their characters and, and wanting to just dive deeper into the relationship of, of that sibling narrative. It was really, really fun to watch. And it just, it made me a better actor, just, just being a part of it. Wow. That's incredible. So when did you guys then, if you started so long ago, when did you actually get to filming? Was it during COVID or in the before times or? Definitely the before times. It feels like a long time ago, but yeah, uh, we we shot uh, in the summer of 2019, uh, spring summer of 2019. Ah, okay, good. So just in time. Or did you do any post or anything during COVID? No, you know what? I think I made a DCP, believe it or not, <laughs> in anticipation. Yeah. Um, like it was like March 7th or something like oh. that. So we were ready to go, and then it was just. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stupid COVID. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. What do you guys, what do you have, uh, what do you have up next then? Because I would love to see anything that you guys do individually or as a group or whatever. Uh, what are your individual plans for next projects? Who's going first? Joe, go first. You're on set right now. Oh, are you? Joe is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on, um, on set right now. And I've actually, Unfortunately, can't really say. <laughs> yes. um, I like it already. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's fun, and I've got. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I I don't know what to say because I can't really say. <laughs> He's the next James Bond. I think that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. I didn't want to say it, but you said it, so. <laughs> I'm good that way. <laughs> well, that's cool, Alana. What are you up to? Yeah, burn for me. It's interesting. COVID's taken my life in a really wild spin. Um, yeah. Theater is kind of, not kind of, theater is my first and forever love. So that's normally what I do for my career. So film and TV is something that was quite new for me when I was filming this film, Range Roads. I was saying earlier, this was the second feature film that I've ever been a part of. So trans- really? wow. yeah, yeah. So transferring always um, those skills uh, to different craft right because I always say like acting for film and acting for theater it's the same art form it's just a different craft and different technique so Mm -hmm. I learned a lot but um since COVID I've been doing a lot of vocal coaching for transgender individuals that are trying to have their actual gender that they relate to representative in their voice so that's been a really cool thing for me oh uh, that's amazing Yeah. And if anyone in our audience wants to engage you in those services, how can they find you for that? Yeah, I actually work because Alberta will always be close to my heart. I'm a Vancouverite now, but um, I actually work through the Wellness Center, the LGBTQ2S Plus Wellness Center of Alberta. So it's a wonderful medical facility that people can find online and the training is totally free for clients. So it's beautiful. But during literally when COVID happened, I was in the middle of a show at the Citadel Theater doing a brand new play called The Garneau Block. So we did tech dress, got backstage and then got our letter that we were terminated. So um, 
So that's on the docket. So the second that things clear up, we'll be back on the stage and actually mounting that production. So I look forward to that. Amazing. Good. good. Yeah. So, so then what are some of the biggest challenges you face as a like, primarily a theater person, then all of a sudden you're on set, how does, how, what's different about how you portray a character or deliver lines or whatever? Learn everything, everything. Yeah. Like literally the only thing that is to me, to me the same is uh, the heart and authenticity. So whether you're on stage or on camera, you're always trying to find the heart and the believability of that character in that story. but. I tell you, like for me, I started my career at the Stratford Shakespeare Festival and you're talking about 2,500 seat houses. So even to not yell into the microphone is still a foreign thing for me to do, honestly. And Ooh, you, can even, literally yeah, you can even see my, my everything. I have to like, it feels like when I'm even in Range Road, when I watch myself, I feel like I'm just like deadening my entire facial features. But um, I remember a wonderful mentor said to me, I'll just let them come to you through the eyes. And so that's what I've been learning through film and TV, particularly in roles like Frankie. It's like, just try to think the thoughts and let the audience, the camera come to you through your eyes. But Burn, everything's different. And I mean, in theater, you get to do it again and again. And it's always in that chronological order of the story, right? So film and TV, like you are picking up scenes after you've had a hot dog on break, chatting with Chad Brownlee and having him sing me a tune, right? <laughs> like you're like just a second, wipe you know the bun out of your teeth and then rolling in like the bathtub crying scene. So it's a <laughs> it's a wild, wild trip. I learned a lot, and I, I hope to learn a lot more and engage with this medium a lot more in my career. I, I hope so. Wow. Chad, what are you up to now? Well, every morning I wake up and I look at my phone, waiting for a call from director Kyle Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You know, so uh, until that day, no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, there's nothing on the movie front right now, but, uh, you know, there's a few shows that hopefully still happen. I've had a couple canceled already uh, at the beginning of July. So it's, you know, it's been tough sledding uh, on that front, but it's it's been a good time to be creative and, and write and, and work on the new record. So um, it's finding the silver lining, really. Oh, sorry, new record? Eventually, yes, it's nice. a work in progress. Absolutely, yeah, it's it's uh, it'll be coming. We're hope hoping for fall. So great, yeah. Great. And then Kyle, no pressure, but <laughs> well, it takes me a long time, clearly, uh, to 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 get a project to the point where we can start, you know, <laughs> uh, seeking financing. So you know, I have a bunch of irons in the fire in terms of development and sort of where I want to turn my gaze next. Um, but that's just, for me, it's an organic process. So I can't, I can't really rush it. I have to let it sit and then I got to work on it and then like not do anything on it for six months and then come back. It's just, that's how it goes. So I've actually been doing a lot more producing um, as of late to try and sharpen that pencil. Um, and, uh, and so I'm just, we're about to go to camera next month in Edmonton on a feature called Hey Victor, and it's an indigenous dark comedy mockumentary, and it's a pseudo sequel to, uh, the 1998 hit film Smoke Signals. So oh, that's one of my um, favorite all time movies. That movie yeah. destroys me when I watch that. That's so yeah, cool. So it's it's, a, it, it's it's very cool, and you know, to be a part of that producing team, and I'm just I, yeah, I'm learning so much at that working at a, a higher budget level, and honestly, just focusing on producing, which is something that I do even when I'm directing. But then I'm I'm wearing all those hats, and I literally have to go. Okay, what time's that flight landing? Okay, now what what are we doing on the scene, uh, Alana and Joe? Like, I mean, it, you have to be able to turn it all off and on so quick. So I'm I'm excited to be, you know, honing that skill set of producing right now. And I think I might have seen you in Range Roads in <laughs> an acting role. That's right. So um, how's that going for you? And are you looking for an agent? <laughs> Baby steps. I actually, uh, the second uh, feature film that we did uh, for our company, North Country Cinema, directed by Alexander Carson, was called Oh Brazen Age, and which I produced. Joe Perry was in it, and I had I, I was in it in, in one of I guess it was an ensemble piece, so it's it's not my first rodeo when it when it comes to that. And uh, you had a you had a hell of a role. In that. I did. I'm, I'm not opposed to it, so we'll <laughs> see see what happens. But That's cool. Indie filmmaking spirit. You yeah. wear many hats, and you yep. get it done. 
Um, we have a question from the audience okay. and I'll throw it to the entire Range Roads team. The question is, what are you most thankful for in this movie? What a beautiful question. Yeah, yes. truly. Wow. Well, I'll start. <laughs> um, you know, I think when I look back on this, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for the, the people. I'm thankful for the team th th that we had. And um, because it wouldn't be what it is without, without the cast and without uh, Joe and Alana's commitment right from the beginning, it just would not be the same. We'd have a different movie. And so I have to be thankful for that alone. Well, I, I'm thankful for the opportunity and for all the relationships that have been built uh, in that process. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a time that I'll never forget because it was so special for me. It was my first experience. So um, yeah, truly, truly thankful for that. Cool. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for the learning opportunity, um, but not just in regards to you know, the arts and what it is to create a story and then share it on a screen. But um, for me, just having a second to, not second, having years to think about and talk to and reflect upon what it is to feel lost in one's life um, and depressed and alone. Um, and I feel like, you know, although this movie was made in the before time, <laughs> I'm really glad that people are seeing it now because I feel like or I hope a lot of people can relate to some of the journeys that they see presented in this film and that sense of isolation and feeling like life is not going the way that you expected or wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very grateful for that opportunity to have a story that made me pause, talk to other people and remind myself that I'm never alone. The family is always there. Mm -hmm. um, and just to reach out always to those that will mm -hmm. always be there for you, whether you want them to be or not. Beautiful answer. That's true. I think that's, yeah, very poignant right now. Yeah, definitely. Joe? Yeah, honestly, um, I was thankful um, to be able to watch it tonight in light of, of, uh, in light of everything that's happened since we filmed it. And, uh, and personally, having gone through some, some uh, familial personal loss since the since the movie was shot um, and watching it again and and having it speak to me in a way that that I, I wasn't expecting um, and, and being able to to see my family and my 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 family's uh, <laughs> struggles reflected in in what I saw tonight um, I'm, I'm super thankful for that. And, and on that, to be less cryptic, I just want to say to my Auntie Brenda, I love her very much. And, and tonight was a, a reminder of how much I love her. Amazing. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. That's beautiful. That, that's one of the... And um, I think on that note, that's a, a lovely way to end this Q&A. And also, um, summarize what Range Roads communicates and the themes that it leaves our audience and on the festival this year. Um, so on behalf of the entire Canadian Film Fest team, I wanna thank you deeply for sharing your work with us, for sharing it with our audiences across Canada. It's been truly an honor. Um, to exhibit this film and we're grateful for uh, your support and for engaging with our audiences tonight. Um, thank you so much, Vern. Yeah. Thanks guys, it was an, it was an absolute honor to have your film close off the festival with us. It's our last night and um, oh, it's just a perfect, it's a perfect goodbye uh, yeah. for now because we'll be back next year. So to everybody out there, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, stick around with us for and pay attention for our lineup for next year it'll be coming because we're going strong huge thanks to super channel who saved the festival last year and continued with us this year every single person at that organization has been so crazy 
generous with their time and resources. I, I can't say enough good things about those. Thank you so much to Super Channel. We literally could not do the festival without you. Thank you. Yeah. So on that note, uh, cheers, everybody. And uh, we'll be seeing you next year, everyone out there. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys.